Well, let's call this close enough. Hi, hello, good evening, and welcome to episode three of Shelf Analysis. It's only Wednesday, but lads, this is going to be a very, very long week. Uh, how are you? My name is Rick O'Shea. You probably know that already because you are in the Rick O'Shea Book Club. Thanks so many for joining us uh, live for Night nice Three. This is very much live. How are you? All good? Drop in some uh, comments uh, if you fancy them in below. We will get to see someone if we've got some questions for our guest uh, tonight who is ready, sitting, waiting. Um, poised, I would say, because I can see her off camera here. Poised panther-like, I think is probably what, what we're aiming for um, here tonight. Before we get into to everything else that we're going to do across the course of uh, the programme this evening, um, how's everybody feeling? This is a, a strange one because we're a, a day later than we were yesterday insofar as uh, there's a lot more people now working at home uh, than they would have been prior to now. Uh, there's maybe an awful lot more people who are in a very different situation than they were yesterday. Maybe people whose uh, jobs have finished, people whose places of work have closed. A lot more people who are one day further into being at home, not being in work, being with your kids. We all love our kids. Um, let us know how you feel. Drop a comment um, below in, in this uh, as well. Um, I, I, I've been going through a kind of, I know it seems weird to, to talk about exhaustion when you do what I do for a living. I play music on the radio and I talk into this to my friends. Um, I went through one of those um, today and I kind of thought that that was going to be you know, a tough one and I was going to have taken on more than I thought I could shoot. Then I realized when I was halfway through the afternoon, I was really looking forward to doing this tonight. And I've seen the list of authors that I have coming up over the next probably three weeks already. And I'm really looking forward to talking to some of these people, not just in Ireland, but we've people lined up in other countries to come on the show as well. So that went a long way. To our friends um, in other festivals, uh, Listowel particularly, I saw today, unfortunately, had to cancel Writers' Week. It would have been the 50th anniversary of Writers' Week this year. I've been there a lot over the last few years. It is my favourite festival in the country, and it's always a joyous week and weekend to spend in Listowel. To everybody involved, how are you? We are thinking of you. Uh, everybody who cancelled ILF Dublin over the last few days as well. There are a lot of festivals that have gone. A lot more are due to be cancelled over the next little while. It's not easy. And perhaps sometimes people feel as if um, festivals are something that make themselves up. They're something that, uh, that, that conjures themselves into existence. And that's that's not the truth. They're, they are the work of a huge teams of people, usually many of whom have worked uh, for the whole year to put a festival together. Um, just to everybody who is involved in all of those over the next while, our thoughts are with you. They will happen again next year. We will all be there, either as people going to see events or as people participating in them. And everybody will come back bigger and better in 2021. Just please don't call them Writers Week 2020, like the Olympics are doing, or or like the Euros are doing, because it just makes no sense. It's not. It's 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 weird. It's a strange one. Books recommendations I have for you. Um, over the last couple of nights, I've taken a book and just pulled one out and given it to you come up with a different idea because somebody was asking uh, i was on the sean o'rourke show this morning with louisa from raven books in black rock and we picked out a, a list of uplifting titles that we thought people might find good reads at a time like this still trying to find a phrase that works for me on that one so they are available as a post in the book club if you want to look louisa's ones are there on top um, she explains quite well as to why she, she recommends all of those. I've suggested amongst other things David Sedaris's When You Are Engulfed in Flames or any David Sedaris because he makes me laugh more loudly than possibly anybody else. Um, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy because uh, I, haven't, I haven't read them probably in 20 years. I read them when I was a kid and I found them the most hysterical thing that I've ever read. And maybe if it's something you're looking forward to read with your kids as well, particularly your teenage kids, it might be a way to go. Um, uh, Ronan Hessian's Leonard and Hungry Paul. I've talked about that in the book club a lot. Also, uh, Sean Bethel's uh, Diary of a Bookseller. You might know Sean. He runs the Wigtown Bookshop, Scotland's largest secondhand bookstore in a place called Wigtown in Scotland. Uh, you can check out his presence on Facebook or or read his book about the sort of people that come into secondhand bookstores. The rest of the list is there, including Marianne Power's book, Charlie Maxey's wonderful The Boy, The Mob, The Fox and the Horse. Um, Robert McFarlane's Underland, which I was raving about quite recently. And if you haven't read the Oh My God, What a Complete Ashley books yet, Go read the Oh My God, What a Complete Ashling books here, because particularly at the moment, it may take us all out from where we need to be right now. Now, uh, what else would I have to talk to you about? If you are buying any of those books as well, uh, uh, worth mentioning, and I think I'm going to hammer on at this for, for quite some time when we're doing these things, uh, try your local bricks and mortar bookstore. I know most Irish bookshops are closed at this point, 
but they're not really. They are still in the process of taking your orders. Uh, a lot of them are still doing either orders uh, on the phone that you can come and pick up, or they're doing orders that are available online. They will send them out to you. Some of them, friends of mine, are just overwhelmed with people looking for books at the moment. So do get in contact with your local bricks and mortar bookstore, whether it's one of the little ones or one of the big ones, uh, and buy your books there uh, if you can. Last one before we get to our guest. Um, Starting this weekend, the other job, as you know, I've mentioned it a couple of times, is me being on RTE Gold every morning from 10 a.m., uh, playing a load of uh, nonsensical old music that I really like and I think may take us again out of where we are right now. Starting this weekend, uh, RTE Gold is going to be simulcasting with RTE Radio 1 on Saturday and Sunday, where you would normally find the sports shows because there's not a lot of sport happening at the moment. So you will be able to find myself on Sunday You'll be able to find Will Lee. He is there on a Saturday on RTE Radio 1. We're simulcasting gold for four hours between 2 and 6, Saturday and Sunday. I'll be the Sunday version of that. And we'll see you there. And then, okay, Karina Camp. Um, obviously, I know most of you are only watching this because you want to know what Karina the houseplant is uh, reading uh, today. There seems to be, the, I'm not sure, if Karina seems to be mostly reading things that are in translation. Because if we look at Karina Camp today, hello Karina, hi, how are you? Just yeah, you're in, in Jordan. No, don't don't get too vigorous. You'll fall over. Um, reading uh, Haruki Murakami's One Q eighty four from what I uh, see. So uh, enjoying that, Karina. Good. Yeah, it's 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 proving to be. You're you're nonplussed. Okay, that's fine. That's 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 good. To be fair, she looks like she's at the very beginning of that, and it might take her some time to get in before we're into it. Our guest tonight on the program is a number of things. Uh, she is the. Editor of uh, The Long Gaze Back and of The Glass Shore. She is the author of Constellations, a book of essays that has been both award-winning uh, and has been fated around the world. Sadly, she was supposed to be at her uh, one of her launches in the United States tonight and sadly has to sit at home with me, well, her in her home and me in my home as we uh, conduct tonight's Shelf Analysis, episode three. Hello, Sinead Gleason. How are you? Hi, Sinead. Let me turn on your you notes. Know, I've turned on you. I've turned on you. Hello. How are you? how are you, Rick? How are you doing? I'm okay. How is the evening treating you so far? It's treating me okay. I mean, I, I, I should be in New York um, in, in a lovely bookshop in, in Brooklyn with Leslie Jemison, a writer I love, having a chat about essays and books, but uh, I'm not. I'm here. Uh, my kids were going to come with me as well. They were very excited about going to New York and for obvious reasons, we're not there. And I, I just keep saying to myself all the time, it's strange times and strange days and stay well and all those things all the time. And I think at least I know we're all in this together. Everybody's feeling it. And so I'm, I'm mostly fine. I'm a bit kind of a little bit tired, a bit anxious. I feel like I'm probably not getting things done um, like a lot of people. But, you know, I'm well. My kids are well. Everyone I know is well so far. And that's as much as you can hope for at the moment. So, yeah, it's a, it's a weird old time, isn't it? Are, are you like me every time you hear the phrase, we're all in this together, there's a lot of that. Do you think of High School Musical or is that just me? I kind of think of the Blitz or the war or something. I don't know. <laughs> but but it does. It definitely feels the fact that it's not just one country as well, I think, is a really big thing. The fact that it's global and worldwide, because I'm I did like we did video chats with friends in San Francisco last week who were stuck in with small kids and, you know, a, a lot of friends in New York, obviously, where it seems to be really escalating at a massive rate there. So, yeah, we're all kind of talking. I, I, I feel like I'm online a lot. I'm watching too much news. My brain feels like a bin on fire, as I keep saying to people. Um, so, yeah, but you kind of want to know it's an information sort of overload, but you can't look away at the same time. But it's really horrifying and then yet there's like there's loads of good things happening as well people are you know i think the best of people's spirit is coming out you know being kind and thinking about other people and doing nice things and doctors and nurses doing incredible work um and then book sales fiction book sales up massively last week which made me go gosh that's brilliant people are reading books i know who would have expected that i mean one of my one of my raison d'etre in starting this particular program was that i knew that i had authors who had books that were due out at the moment or had things that were due to happen and that these people weren't going to get the same sort of big launch. They weren't going to get any of this. Yep. And I thought, well, the least we can do is do something like this. And then fiction sales, you're right up 66% last week. I can go home. There's no point in any of this. That's fine. Well, <laughs> well I, I think, I mean, I'm fair play to you for doing this. And um, oh yeah, you, I, I brought some wine for a very specific reason. Have you got one? Okay. Uh, tonight, Shall we? Um, cheers, cheers. No, no, here, the um, left hand side, there you go. Left, left hand, I'm no, terrible. There we go. Spatial relations. Yeah, there we go. Good. There we That's go. Um, because if the things weren't going as they were going, a lot of people who are probably book club members and yourself and myself would be in Hodges Figgis uh, raising a glass to Sarah Baum's wonderful handiwork, which was launched yeah. uh, today. They did some online stuff and a Twitter AMA. Um, and it's, it's a gorgeous book. It's also a book. It's about making things physically. It's about writing, but also Sarah's an artist. So it's a lot about 
what you spend your time on and what you give your priorities to and how you should have a space. She has a, an art desk and a writing desk in her house, which I love the idea of. It. But it's also just the idea of like, don't feck around on the internet as much and maybe make some things, whether that's bread yeah. or knitting jumpers or whatever it is. Um, I, so I, I kind of like that. I'm going to demonstrate so this to make people haven't seen one of these because I think you have one of these too. This I do, yeah. This is Sarah's own handiwork. So Sarah created a bunch of these from uh, Spill Simmer Falter with it. This is one eye, the dog from Spill Her Simmer, actual Falter real Wither. dog, yeah, her, her wonky one eye dog. And okay, he's been a bit through the wars, to be fair. We moved house at one stage and he lost a leg. We just had to be I, put I feel that's quite fitting. It. He's quite a broken dog anyway, in the, in the book. So I, I feel that kind of works. That know? was my thought. Um, yeah. So uh, so to everybody at Tramp Press and to the launch tonight uh, of uh, of Sarah's brand new book, uh, Handy Work, congratulations, guys. Well done. Absolutely. Um, it's kind of, it's strange. I had that moment. And again, the pop culture part of my head goes, with the two Doctor Whos as well, because we are both the previous and current presenter of the book show on RTB Radio 1. Meta. You regenerated into me and people got the dodgy end of the stick. Yeah, <laughs> I, well, you I, so are you Jody then? Who am I? Can I be David Tennant? Well, that was my thought is you're David Tennant and I'm Matt Smith and I just haven't quite gotten used to, you know, my teeth yet. <laughs> That's you it. Know, and I I, did, you see the, did you see the Jody message today as Doctor Who telling people on Twitter? It was like, you know, don't be afraid. It'll be okay. The doctor will get through this. Doctors know what they're doing. It was very good. Can watch I, I'm again because I'm avoiding a lot of what's going on on social media. I'm just trying to do the things I have to do and, and not be part of it. And people do say, "Did you yeah. see this thing?" Of course, because I, no. I haven't seen anything that today. Um, tell me about this before we want to talk about. You've picked three books that you think we should be looking at, paying attention yeah. to, the reading as well. But before we do that, I mean. You know, you have another hat as well. So you've a hat of being the previous presenter of the book show and being an, an arts sure. journalist as well. Just maybe for everybody who's watching this, who, who aren't really in the book world or the book community, we've seen how it affects uh, all, for example, we have, there's a, a lot of that happening. We've seen how it affects yeah. bookstores in particular, there have been stories about that. How is it affecting th the greater kind of Irish book world uh, as, as you see it? Maybe things people don't necessarily know that or, or, or haven't seen. Well, I was thinking when you mentioned the festivals in your introduction, I was thinking of the wonderful West Cork Literary Festival, which I've, uh, which I'm due to do things at uh, with Leslie Jimson and Roxanne Gay uh, in July, and, and hopefully that will still go ahead. But I remember Emer, the wonderful woman who runs it, saying that she starts planning that the week after the festival finishes in July. So things like festivals, there's there's a year's work. You don't just knock together a great program in a couple of months. Um, so all that planning and time and money spent booking flights that you might not get back on, on you know, maybe 50 people are coming to your festival. There's there's that. Um, in terms of uh, and a couple of books I'm going to talk about this evening, I'm really feeling for a lot of people I know who have books coming up that you spent, you know, two, four, six years of your life on. And the only thing you get, it's kind of like your Olympics every four years. Your time to shine is your, is your launch, not just because you get to celebrate with your friends and family, but you get a big bump in sales from a book launch. And that's not going to happen if people are not gathering in bookshops. Also, writers love to meet their readers. And if you're not getting to meet people at book signings and, and festivals, it, it can feel like a lonely place and your book just sort of, you know, it slips off into the distance. So I'm really, and we've already seen a couple of cancellations. Um, speaking of Tram Press, uh, Dear and Negrifa's book has been moved back to later in the year, which was due to come out next month. A, a wonderful book called A Ghost in the Throat. And I, I, I'm just, so much work goes into writing. And if you not to have this happen, I think. The other thing people forget, and unless you know you're J.K. Rowling or a handful of writers, writers don't make an awful lot of money. I think the mean income for most writers is 10 or 11 grand a year. Everybody's got second jobs, uh, teaching workshops or writing essays or, you know, for newspapers or whatever it is. And, and most writers, most of the time, are very, very broke. So things like festivals, and in my case, I would chair things at festivals. I, was also, I would also be on panels. So a lot of my work has already dropped off. I'm, I've been self-employed for 20 years and I'm a writer. I'm the ninja of self-isolation. I know all about it. But uh, I, I think that's going to, I think a lot of writers are going to really struggle financially in the next few months if people aren't getting online. And, and you know, do, you look at what Bob is doing in Gutter Bookshop, just Trojan work in the shop every day behind closed doors, to, sending out books and orders. And, and that's all we can ask people to do is support the work. And you'll, there'll still be writers and there'll be more books if people can afford to live and you can do about that by supporting their books or pre-ordering books that are going to come out in a while. Yeah, I think people maybe underestimate that sometimes. And I've seen a lot of Irish authors talk about that this year, about if you, yeah. you know, somebody's book is coming out in four weeks or six weeks or eight weeks, the pre-sales, you going and pre-ordering that from a bookstore yeah. online somewhere, that's a big deal because it does it makes the bookstore go, oh, well, maybe I should be stocking more copies of that book because it's going to be popular. Absolutely. And then, you know, uh, the, the publicity costs an awful lot of money, you know, buying ads and, and paying for the production of books. And, and uh, somebody said that to me that the production of books might be in jeopardy at some point. If, you know, if people aren't going to work or there's more isolation or people get sick, there won't be people to physically print the books. So it's a very precarious sort of time. But it, it, thankfully, it's the best time ever to be at home if you have time and you have the headspace to pick up a book uh, and start reading. Because I think more people do seem to. I'm hearing 
more people are reading than, than had been. Um, and it's a great way to get you off your phone to physically sit down with a book, leave your phone in another room and just, you know, don't read on a Kindle, just read an actual battered old paperback. Yeah, and I, I, I'm now conscious that we're, we're halfway through the programme and I haven't started talking to you about books yet. I kind of knew it was going to go that way. It's going to be two hours anyway, but that's fine. Ema, I'm not in a rush. I have nowhere to go. Emer says in a message, says, well, look at Sinead's bookshelves. Uh, Karina is also echoing this thought as well. We are going to get to Sinead's bookshelves. We're going to ask you to just maybe walk us through a couple of things sure, yeah, in a while. Yeah. But you have three books that you are going to yeah. just put in front of us now. What's the first one? Well, again, because I'm conscious of books coming out and we don't know what's going to happen with launches and authors, um, this book seems very timely. And don't be put off by the, the, the title, which is Notes from an Apocalypse by the wonderful um, Mark O'Connell. People might remember him um, from, he wrote a great book about transhumanism, called How to Be a Machine. So this is Mark traveling around the world, talking to people about their attitude to what will happen at the end of the world. So you've got billionaires heading off to New Zealand, buying bolt holes, because that's where they're all going to run away to when, you know, everything goes um, belly up. Um, the people hiding it in the, in the kind of the highlands in Scotland. Um, he goes to Pripyat, which is where the Chernobyl uh, disaster happened. And you can go on Chernobyl tourism tours if you want to um, uh, and talks to environmentalists. So it's a really, and Mark has a very unique kind of style of writing and he often brings his own life into it. And he's a father of two young kids. So he's thinking, you know, what's the end of the world look like and how do you talk to your kids about it? So brilliant and tender and funny and uh, out in April with, uh, with Granta. I, I think absolutely in terms of the, the you know, I'd read To Be a Machine. I think it's a, it's a fantastic book about transhumanism. But in this book, he brings, yeah. in, he brings in the whole um, uh, element of his, his um, son and the fact that he's now become a father. And now, obviously, therefore, the potential future end of the world, for whatever reason, becomes something very personal to him, something very close to him. So it's not a cold clinical book. It's a very human very, very no human. not a lot and i think a lot of people if they don't know mark's work and i don't know how mark would feel about this but a lot of people compare him to john ronson because he kind of has that takes mm. big global subjects and make you know funnels them through his own personal prism and makes them quite funny um but the first book had a lot of that as well you know talking to people who want to upload their their cloud to, to their brain to the cloud after they die you know it's quite out there stuff but stuff you won't know about so really fascinating to hear from because i didn't know about that stuff you know? Yeah, it's it's really impressive. Do you, do you have the date on that again? I don't have it in front. It's of me. April sixteenth, I think, April. definitely yeah. mid April. Okay. Yeah. So again, you can pre-book that with the book store of your choice yeah. right now. And um, what's your second choice? Another Irish book, fiction this time. Um, and again, this will feel like I'm picking books that are very um, connected to the moment. Um, this wonderful novel by uh, Elaine Feeney, who's predominantly been known until now as a poet, but this is her debut novel. Uh, the main character is called Sinead, not why I picked it. Um, it's also set in a hospital, also not why I picked it, <laughs> even though I'm interested in hospitals. Um, but it's about a woman called Sinead who gets cancer and doesn't tell her family, except she confides in this lovely magpie figure on the book, on the cover here. Um, and it's set mostly in a hospital, so it brings together women from different classes and backgrounds, and it sort of focuses on their camaraderie and the chats and the laughs and what it's like to be, and it really gets across what it's like to be in a hospital, which is quite boring a lot of the time. Um, and it's quite dark in the subject matter, but it's also very funny. Elaine read it, something we did in Galway last month, and she had the whole audience um, in fits. Um, and I think she's a really interesting writer, and I think a real breath of fresh air. I haven't read a novel that I liked as much as this in a long time, so I think lots of people are going to be talking about this book. It's also out, out in April, um, and she's just a really brilliant, uh, unique and original, and very funny writer and person. So yeah, as you were by Elaine Finney. Yeah, I, I think I, I haven't had the chance to bang the drum on that one um, as of yet because it's not out yet, but I've read it too and I think it is a, it's a uniquely beautiful Great. book and the central premise about everything happening within that hospital ward and about the main character not wanting to reveal what's going on to those closest in her life. It can, I mean, you know, it could potentially sound quite dark, which it is, but it's also really funny in places, which is very hard to take out of, out of something like that. She's doing a brilliant job. I echo all that completely. Yeah. Uh, book three, what have you chosen? I really like this. Well, I kind of went for something old and for a writer that I love. Um, and also this, this will show you how much I can, when you get obsessed with writers. So this is, uh, it's nonfiction. And it is The Long-Winded Lady by Mae Brennan. Sorry, there's a glary shine off that. Uh, and these were originally published in The New Yorker in the 40s and 50s um, as sort of, a, as a column called The Talk of the Town, which still exists in, the, exists in The New Yorker. And Mae Brennan was the first woman to ever write it. And it's basically Mae wandering around the city getting on the, the subway, sitting in restaurants on her own, wandering around, just, just people watching, just looking at people and writing about things. And they're, they're kind of small little essays um, and they're often very tender. They're often often about loneliness and solitariness, which is why I really like them. But often they're very funny. There's the whole one about broccoli and how she feels about broccoli and it's just broccoli, nothing else. Um, so I kind of, so I love this. This Now this is the first edition, so don't buy this. It's probably- That's very beautiful. But, but you'll yeah. be delighted to know that the wonderful Irish publisher, Stinging Fly, 
did in addition, um, which is gorgeous and you can buy it and you'll be supporting an Irish publisher who are local. Um, but she's she's a, a wonderfully observant uh, uh, writer in terms of what she kind of takes in and what she looks at. And you can definitely see how it filtered into the short stories, which she's probably better known for um, the, the Rose Garden uh, and the Springs of Affection. But I, I'm a bit of a Maid Brennan obsessive. I've walked around New York. I've gone to the places in New York where she um, where she used to live and where she used to work. And so now I'm talking about New York, I'm going to feel all sad again that I'm not there. But and for, um, like, no. you, So read Maid Brennan. She's amazing. You mentioned this to me earlier, and I was having that moment of, I, I went, oh, yeah, and I've read something about Mae Brennan really recently. It gives me an opportunity to maybe recommend something as yeah. well, which of course is this. Oh, yeah, yeah. Anne Enright's No Authority. This is uh, Anne Enright's writings from um, being the uh, Irish lyric for fiction. Um, and it's a series of both uh, uh, um, things that she wrote and then yeah. the lectures that she gave throughout the course of the year, all put together in that. Of course, if you've ever heard Anne read anywhere, you can but hear it in Anne's voice, which makes it even better. And there's a, a section of it devoted to, to Mae Brennan as well. It's a beautiful, beautiful, well put together book as well. That's, um, uh, it's you're, gorgeous you're, to hold on you're to. You're making me well. think now when you mentioned Anne about, you know, that famous, infamous uh, five page Christmas shop in the Green Road. That's the kind of, that's the kind of panic buy shut in lock in shop that we all need now we need to kind of get on out to read that and just kind of go right we don't need vacuum packed chestnuts at this very moment in time or brandy butter but we, we need other things so we, we need, need we need and an right to read that exact section of the yeah, video i think that's I a think great so. idea okay i'll work yeah. on that that's that's Do it. I mean, you know that's, i mean you know her. we can just we can get, <laughs> I, I'll, have I'll have a okay. word i'll have a word um your bookshelves right just do you have a way of showing us what's there or giving us a sense of what's behind you people are really well interested I, in i'm lot, my shelves downstairs are more organized and my children are downstairs and it's uh, uh, chaotic so you, uh, you wouldn't be able mm. to hear me if i was downstairs so these are much more random ones there's a, what i'm thinking here there's a mix of old and new so there's kind of um lots of i have a lot of the fitzcarraldo books which i love they do non-fiction this is the drive your Pl your plow over the bones of the dead the all guitar cookbook yeah, which yeah, I, yeah. I love there's lots of stuff in translation there's lots of old stuff there's books by friends Patrick DeWitt who's the sisters brothers that's a fail safe book if you give that book to anybody my, my dad who doesn't read love that book anybody who who isn't even a frequent reader it's one of the best novels you can give to someone who loves the sisters brothers about two two cowboys um more recent stuff uh some Hang Kang um uh, lots of essays uh, Lydia Davis's essays which are just over here which are wonderful I've realized um, I've had a moment where I've actually I've actually still moved my head closer to my own laptop and tilted my head it's it's just, <laughs> it just no good at all I, I can't see uh, it closer. lots of stuff and um, Shirley Jackson um old stuff wonderful book in, one of my favorite books in translation um Pedro Parama Ron Wolfo very short uh, magic realist um Mexican classic Fantastic. um yeah this is very disordered and there's no scope or shape um it's also you can see they're kind of bowing because I have more books behind those books um so yeah I'm, I'm the person who's going to be one day killed sadly killed by their tv or pile because there's too much stuff in the house and you you so. double shelf you have behind and in front That's yeah a dangerous yeah thing i know it's terrible but i'm just running out of space so I, there's more so yeah i mean there's more stuff behind me over here there's like oh, loads of wow. more chaotic uh, there's an there's an old i love virginia wolf there's an old that's a very old kind oh, of 1920s deep. virginia wolf the waves lots of rachel cusk trusty lighthouse I, to match my I'm, I'm constantly to look at if you should look at what's behind me. Oh, hang on, I'll get, we'll get to that in a minute. If you should look behind it's me, very neat. You're putting me to shame, Rick. It's very it neat is. yourselves. Okay, but hang hang on, right? Let's 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 for the sake of complete honesty here. Let's do the whole. So that my TBR is then down here. So it's that that's two sets of okay. those here. That's just my TBR. And then you got a bit breaky up there. That's all the other stuff that's over on the other side of the room okay. is there as well. Um, okay. I'll look up. I'm not going to show any more because it's embarrassing. Um, before. <laughs> Before we um, uh, finish up, though, um, uh, again, maybe just some final thoughts about maybe things people could be doing over the course of the next little while in terms of reading. If you're if you're finding it hard to concentrate, I've talked to loads of people, yeah. and myself included, who would normally read voraciously and have found it hard to go. Yeah, me, me too. I sit down. You know, should we be attempting shorter fiction? Should we be attempting poetry? Should we be? I've had loads of different opinions from people. I just wondered if you had a thought. Uh, there's a few things you can do. Um, Julian Goff was 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 uh, quoted somebody else saying it's really important to keep a journal in these times because you are we are living through a moment in history and you might want to reflect on where you are and you might plunder it for a piece of writing later on. I'm finding it hard. I mean, I'm look across the room from me is Hilary Mantel, a doorstop, which is a, a great idea for a time like this, but I just can't handle it at the moment. So, um, what's working for me is short things. So so essays, short stories. Um, and particularly poetry. Um, a lot of um, Maggie Smith, the wonderful American poet, has a book coming out 
uh, her, she's a brilliant collection called the, the Well Speaks of Its Own Poison. And people probably know her poem, Good Bones, which goes viral every time something terrible happens in the world. But she's written a book called Keep Moving. And it started as a load of kind of affirmations on Twitter where she, you know, you don't, you don't have to do too much if you're feeling bad, you know, stay in bed. If things are not going great for you, there'll be better days. And that might sound a bit holistic and new age, but it's actually really, because she's a tremendous poet, it sounds gorgeous. That's coming out soon as well. So short things, I've been reading, you know, um, Hannah Sullivan, lots of the kind of Faber stuff. Stephen Sexton, wonderful poet from Northern Ireland. Uh, I loved his collection. So even if you're reading a poem a day, it's just kind of funneling a handful of words into your brain to sort of dispel all the news and the chaos. Um, but yeah, I'm finding it hard. And, and what I say to that is don't beat yourself up if you can't read or you can't write or you can barely make a sandwich. That's enough. If you're just getting through the times that we're in, because it is difficult and we're all feeling you know, various degrees of cabin fever and anxiety and different, some days good, some days bad. And, and books can definitely help you with that. Um, um, uh, yeah, poetry is good, short. Before you go, I'm gonna give one more plug to that's the brand new, it's the gorgeous orange cover. So it's the new paperback edition of Constellation. It's the new paper, yeah, it's meant to be out next week, but I think at everything that's going on, uh, it's in the shops now. Uh, and then the, Ameri the American one is, is, which was out yesterday is blue. So I, with, with the original one, which is cream, I've got some sort of, there must be a flag that's, you know, orange, blue and white. I've got, I've got the makings of a tricolor in there somewhere. So. Um, yeah, it's all good. Again, uh, all I can say is thanks a million for, for coming in and for hanging around for half an hour and for letting you know have a look around your house and chatting about stuff. Um, Not at all. And, th and thank you for doing this. You're always championing people in books, Rick, and it's very good of you to take the time to do this and chat to people. So you're well you're breaking up there. I can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sinead Gleeson, thanks a million. Cheers. Thank you, Rick. Um, there, let's go here and uh, I gotta press that button. There we go, that button's gone. That's good. My god, hang on. This so, again, you see, part of the thing about running your own show like this is that you're in the process of both and putting it together, and then you're to the director, and then you press that button, and then that's it, and then everything's gone. That's almost it for tonight's um program. Uh, you can, of course, uh, find it at any stage in the book club because every time we finish up, the uh, whole thing is archived. So, if you missed a little bit and you're coming in very late, don't worry about it. Uh, the whole one will be there. You can go back and have a look in the announcements section as well, and you'll be able to find all of the previous episodes of uh, Shelf Analysis. We had Dave Rudden on Monday night with Joe Spain last night uh, as well. We will be back tomorrow night from 8 o'clock. Uh, you'll also be able to uh, find us on Friday night here, and uh, genuinely, the stack of people I've lined up over the course of the next two weeks uh, is going to keep us all really, really well occupied. Thank you very much for everybody for coming on tonight. Back tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. on RTE Gold. If you don't know how to find RTE Gold, you should just Google it. You'll find it if you're there. And then this coming weekend, Sunday, on RTE Radio 1 as well, I'm going to be around playing music for four hours. Uh, so if you have any early requests you want to get in, you can drop them in the comments and we'll do those for your RTE Radio 1. So back tomorrow night here on Shelf Analysis uh, from 8 o'clock with another mystery guest. See you then.